This is Alex Boulos, and this is weird. I'm not used to talking in front of a camera, but you know, I have to make the effort because I know that people are watching and uh, I wanna make this about you. I relate to you because we're trying to share our passion and inspire others. First of all, I'm committed to posting more videos of me talking in 2020. I wanna start sharing my process and putting more content that is sharing my experience and being authentic. I wanna be me, you know? Anyway, so two weeks ago I was in the NAMM show and a big thanks to Arturia for inviting me there as an artist. It was truly the best event of my life. I got to meet all the music companies and technology and gear and I also met a lot of people in the music industry including other YouTubers such as Andrew Huang, Sanji AC and Ill Factor and in this video I'll be talking with Ill Factor who is a Grammy nominated producer and um, he's one of my biggest inspiration. We will be talking about vulnerability and the passion behind being a music production influencer. So um, enjoy. Hello. Hey, how you doing, brother? Hi, El. How are you? Good, good, good. One second, let me just put this on. Left, right. Who knows anymore? I always get mixed up as well. Like the. Yeah, it's and and it's just like. Sometimes I'll even put it on my eyes. Some, like, let's say there's a friend that picks it up and it's like this. And yeah. And you'll see them try to fix it and they're like not getting it. It's rocket science. One second. Just let me get this. All right. Sorry about that. Just got back on. And that's how I was able to make a million dollars with five minutes. Did you get all that? No. Did you, oh. What did you say? That's it, bro. Like, how to make a million dollars in five minutes. You just missed the whole thing. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's recording, so. Yeah, good. Yeah, so you'll do the replay. Cool, man. So, wh where are you from? Where are you based out of? Tell me about what you got going on and, and uh, you know, what, what, what's, uh, what's the vision here? What are you, what are you striving to, to achieve with, with your avenue, um, you know? Where you're you located? Lebanon? You're you're in Lebanon, so you flew from Lebanon to the Nam show. No, I'm from Lebanon. Oh, gotcha, I gotcha. Moved to, I, I moved to the United States uh, when I was uh, 20, so that was uh, four years ago now. Wow. And that's four years of practicing English and being, you know, American and cool, bro. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's uh, still settling in. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, so I took your course. Oh, cool. Back in 20, was it 2018? Yeah, end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And uh, I got to say, man, uh, we vibe. Like you you and I, like I don't, like I don't know you. Like, personally, yeah. But I mean, I've watched you speak for hours and like. Oh, man, that's crazy. You know, like I've thought about you as a person for, for way more time than you did about me. So that's, <laughs> you know. I get, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit, you know, so that you're on the same page as I am. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I used to, I mean, I've always produced music, you know, like since I was, well, tw 12. But my mm -hmm. dad used to produce when, before that. So so all my life there was computers and production and, you know, hearing the tick, tock, tock, tock mm -hmm. and all of that. So I uh, picked it up quickly from my dad. And at first I was using Steinberg, uh, Cubase and even New Window. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was really like it was a world for me. I mean, I, I was the kid that just liked to play every game and finish and know every single thing you have to know in the game, and win and and then get bored and starting a new game. But then when I found music, it was just a game that never ends, and I felt like I would never really master it because it's just mm. so much to learn and to explore and to to dive into. Um, and I had to explore every single thing, like. I, I created music, I, I think I created like 30 songs before I even realized there is a quantize button. Mm -hmm. And that's, and you know, like that's something that today's generation, they don't really get that. Today's generation. I mean, today, today with social media and all of that, mm. like, I don't know like if they're ever going to get the experience that we had when we grew up and, and how our experience was discovering music and music production especially because it was software mm -hmm. um, and it was at the time i mean i don't know about you but i mean you're older than me but when i was young 
there was no internet in my house, like not all the time. It was like every Saturday or the computer where you produce music is not the same computer as the one you use with internet and where you watch videos. So in my experience, I, I, fell, in, like, I fell into music when I watched a YouTube video of a guy playing um, um, a cover of a song I heard on the radio. Uh, the song was, uh, I think, um, I don't, re I don't remember, but I just, I just saw, I, I just felt like, wow, I, I need to play that, and I need to play the piano, and I just started uh, really obsessing over every single, you know, arpeggio and like uh, melody progressions. I just, uh, I was just trying things out, you know, like I learned one song and I started changing the song in ways that I could at the time with the skills that I had and I was very curious and like passionate about figuring out other things that worked with that and kind of just build on top you know just kind of create a world of things I know that are beautiful and work for me mm -hmm. and that I would love to share and if other people like it too that's like we bond you know we're on the same vibe so we can share music together i can show you more stuff and we can have fun with that so it was very it was a it was very relationship based like music for me always makes me think about someone or something but it always brings me to a place and it's it's very related to my senses so i visualize like sound and vision it's kind of the same thing you know when i now what as a producer when i hear a kick I see the envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On Ableton as well. I know how many bars it could be, or how many beats or sub beats, yeah. and if there's something weird there that could be interesting. And so, I discovered Ableton uh, later when I was like uh, 17, and it was really awkward, and it still is to this day uh, compared to my experience, my workflow in Cubase. Um, mm -hmm. I still sometimes really get struck. Like I get the moment where I don't know what to do. Like I don't know what to do that wouldn't get me lost somewhere. And that's gotcha. because, you know, things get crowded in Ableton and you can create groups within groups and instrument racks within audio effect racks. And it's kind of yeah. like, I didn't have that with Cubase and it was way more simpler then. But I, as a geek, I always like to go for the more complicated and more options and or more, you know, more and more that you can do. And for me, it's like, I have to learn the latest technology and always be on top notch if not then i have insecurities about myself you know kind of like girls have insecurities about their bodies i have insecurities we're about all, the plugins all, i don't have yeah we're all insecure man uh, you know male female we're all insecure and it's in you know emotionally um just about everything so you know in artists and musicians they go they uh, an artist will have just a magnifying glass highlight those insecurities a lot more because they they are being a little bit more vulnerable when presenting their music or even in the process of that. And that's what we're doing. We're sharing intimacy. We're being vulnerable. We're allowing the world to peer into what we thought was exciting for us. And when, when they see it, you know, we're, we're, we're revealing a little nakedness about ourselves. And when they, when they peer into it, yeah. we're hanging on every word that they're saying. Like you can have 5 million amazing, positive, super life-changing YouTube comments. But then you have one negative comment and that's the one you think about all day. And that's, that plays into the rightness of our insecurities. As an artist, you're going to be insecure. So true. It's so, so true. <laughs> yeah, you play into that. And what, what we have to understand is, is exactly that. It's, it's a normal part of the process of being an artist, both a music producer, uh, a vocalist, artist, and even someone who just, even on a painter or anything like that. It's just being vulnerable. It, it, even sharing your opinion on something is being vulnerable enough to let somebody know this is what I think about what's going on in the state of everything. And you're inviting them into that. Absolutely. So yeah, man. I absolutely vibe with that. Um, cool. So you, so yeah, so where, where in the States are you living at now? Where are you based out of? I'm in uh, Redwood city, California. Okay, yeah. cool. It wasn't that much of a trek for you to hit up Nam. That, that was cool. To... No, it was six hours drive. Very yeah. Comfortably. You know, I went on an Airbnb and, all fine, you know, as if I was living there. You know, I've been cool. traveling the world and I feel like it's very easy. When you do, when you've done it a few times then it becomes so easy and you realize that, you know, the world is yours, kind of. Yeah. So you have, uh, so besides making music, you have now an outlet or an audience that you're trying to inspire to help them make music as well? Is that weird? Um, um, 
I, I, I mean, it's broader than that, but yeah, that's, that's definitely part of the journey. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Definitely. Um, I, I, so, so what I learned from you basically mm -hmm. is how to go from having all these ideas and being inspired and have a, having a rich palette of like, I don't know, passion. You capture pe people. I think you capture pe people from the passion side of things mm -hmm. because we can see how passionate you are about what you do and mm -hmm. the way you talk about it. And it kind of, I don't know, like it motivates. It doesn't just, because it, it's kind of like, maybe that's just your trip, you know? And, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a trip that a lot of people are on as well. And I think that you also are in a relationship now with the people and 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 thus with that part of yourself yeah 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 no man you are recording this right because that that was yeah that was epic to me man I, i'd love to even get that clip if you wouldn't mind i could just share that with so many people um and i think man what you said is first of all thank you thank you for that it, it really it really means a lot man and it doesn't go unnoticed because at first it was weird for me to make the transition from producing i still produce full-time i'm still working with with major recording artists um, but it was really weird for me to step into this arena of being vulnerable and, and being, hey, guys, here's a little. And I overthought a lot at the very beginning stage. I wanted to I knew that I wanted to, to teach and to help people. I just didn't know like how to technically do that. So when I started the YouTube channel and I started the business uh, with Beat Academy, I just didn't know exactly what would help people. So I was like just being very extra technical, overcomplicated. And then someone came along, Simon, it's just kind of like, you know, just share the same passion you have, just show how passionate you are about it. I was like, okay, cool. And there was a great book called The Go-Giver that I read, which was a really amazing book um, that really kind of put into perspective about this notion of, you know, not holding back. And because uh, I, I started seeing a lot of people that I was trying to like, hey, you're doing this. How are you doing it? And they're like, oh, I don't give up all my secrets. I just kind of like, uh, I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to give. I'm going to just do the, the go-giver mentality and just just give. And it's been awesome because I've been, it's just so natural. It's been so natural to just express the passion I have for producing music. But now, and, and look, the reality is I'm in a whole new season of my life. And I've had a lot of people ask me, why are you doing this? Is it because the, the music stuff isn't working out anymore? So you're doing it's like, no, on the contrary. As a matter of fact, it's actually ramped up more now than it has before. I, I, you know, I thank God for that because these many doors of opportunities have opened up, but it's, I'm in a new season. I didn't want to be in this hamster wheel rat race of staying in the studio from three in the afternoon to three in the morning. Like I used to, before I got married, you know, I'm married. I have three boys now and I'm so grateful for the season of life that I'm in. And so I want to spend more time with them, but yet I want to impact lives with, with the music production process. And I felt like I was just being in a cave you know, when I would work with, with Jimmy Douglas or Timbaland and we were, I was just in a cave the whole time. I was like in the studio, banging out beats and doing all this. And I'm not looking down at the guys who are doing that because it's a grind. Like what I tell a lot of people, like this is a in the studio all day, make beats, hope somebody walks into the studio that here's what I'm doing. I can land, you know, yo, here's what I'm looking at. You're working on, check it out. That's the kind of grind that I was in. And when I stepped into this, YouTube space or just into the space of providing my experiences and sharing what I've learned and, and, and helping and coming alongside people and helping them take their next step. I realized um, I, I, I can't do both well. Like I, I can't do the rat race and then do this on the side. So slowly I was like dipping my toe on, on, on the beat Academy side and then still doing this. But my dedicated focus for 2020 is going all in with the Beat Academy side, going all in, we just, okay, I want to step away from the rat race completely. Not completely, but in the sense where I don't want to have to chase every possible Rihanna's looking for a song opportunity. And I just, I want to pour into more people's lives uh, through music production. So I, mean, I, I thank you for that, man. I, I thank mean, you for the time. I want to be part of this. Yeah. How can I help? Um, well, right now we're just, you know, doing a lot of strategic partnerships. We're just spreading the, you know, working alongside, like that's the main reason I was at NAM. Uh, believe it or not, it was the first time I've ever been to. And that was for the purpose of, I'd always, I'm always in LA for studio session. And, you know, 
I normally go around that time, like this week for the Grammys. I'm always there for the Grammys. I'm always there with the songwriting sessions and things like that. And I was like, ah, Nam's really to geek out over gear. I don't really need to do that. I'll just find out what's new on YouTube and that's it. Um, but I went there with the purpose of like, you know, meeting people like you and, and bumping into so many great people that I know at, at like guys like Waves and Spitfire Audio and a whole bunch of other people that I just wanted to link up to because I was like, look, I want to, I want to provide content. I want to help you guys with content that I can do to bring more eyeballs to what I'm doing. And then therefore more lives I can help and impact that way. So it was a strategic partnership that way. And that's yeah. what I was well, That's I think that we can have a very good uh, partnership, me and you. I so, um, yeah. What I what, what are you? To, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I wanted to. I'm basically like I don't know. I don't know if it's you, but I I kind of want to do what you already did and take mm. it from there as well. Uh, I don't know where you're going with it, but uh, what where you what you've done? That's something that I definitely want to do, mm. and I want to do it in 2020. And so then I meet you by accident when I had forgotten, you know, about mm. you because, you know, like life, life happened, you know, like yeah. after taking your course, I was so, I was, I felt like I had the keys to success, That's awesome. you know, like you gave me the, you gave me something, you gave me the, something that gave me, gave me the feeling that I could make it. Mm. And, and just that feeling by itself was just enough for me. And it gave oh. me, it gave me uh, a lot, you know, in an other ways if you know what I mean. And, yeah. and now I'm back here and I'm thinking, okay, I'm in a point in my life where I have a chance of putting all my energy into what I love. I actually have that chance and it's not something that I've had before and I not like, I, I can very easily take it for granted. So I'm just going to take risks and just put it all right just now, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to like partner up with people as well because I think that together we become a bigger thing and everybody mm. recognizes that now. So it's, it's good to share and to be open. And I want to be open with everybody. I have nothing to hide about me because my whole life has been an experience that I found beautiful. And I'm not here to tell people how to live, mm. but I've enjoyed the point of view that I would love to share. And if, if you would enjoy it too, that's amazing. You know, that's just, yeah. just the whole point. I'm not here to like try to prove a point or like make a make a case that I'm right and pe some people are wrong or anything. It's just I'm sharing my perspective as an artist, and uh, it's it's maybe being vulnerable to say hello and to be seen and to be seen for who I really am and not like who I would be if I was conforming to the old ways of, of doing. Old yeah. ways of doing are are dying now, and there are new ways that are emerging instead. And I think that we are the pioneer of that movement mm. and we are responsible now uh, f for, for helping others get, get there, you know, like, cause we, we've, we've, you know, we've stepped out from the, the, the normal people, normal musicians don't do what we do. Normal musicians of our generation usually go into conservatory and then they have to compete and they have to, you know, win Grammys and all of that. Yeah. YouTube is not about that. YouTube is, was never about that. But, but YouTubers seem to be more happy than these people. Why? Because it allows you to be more authentic and more human. And now the way you talk to strangers is more human because you've, you've found your own humanity and you've risen from that low vibrational rat race where it's separate. We're all separate. We can't. Why would I share with you if you don't have anything to give me in return? Like, that's just wrong thinking. If you love something, you want to share it, you know? Mm. But if, if it's just, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I totally vibe with that. Awesome, man. So besides making your own music and besides taking, you know, um, producing your music, so are you you're starting a blog? You're starting some kind of, um, a, a con you're, are you putting out content on, on YouTube and things like that? To well, let me show you my YouTube. Yeah. And I also have a website. I have a LinkedIn because I'm also in the rat race currently. I'm, I was just working at Oracle as a, um, as a, oh shit, I have to change that. Look at that, bro. I'm, I'm a media, media specialist at Oracle. Oh, cool. Okay. So I create content, which is exactly aligned with my music production goals. You know, like I'm, I'm getting the skills I need to use with my music production. So it's good. Awesome. But but I I want to change like I want to 
I want to try something new. So I'm kind of applying now and um, like I'm applying everywhere, but in like software engineer, digital marketing, music producer, music teacher roles. Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, that's my website and it's very new and it's not even like done, but uh, some people in Italy are making it for me. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like, I like the general vibe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the color. But yeah, you can see here, you know, like there's music coaching, there's music production, and mm -hmm. there's this concept that I wanted to do, which is a weekly Ableton masterclass. And that's very similar to what you do when you go live and you start producing music and just you're, you're just in your zone and yeah. people are, are there and, and you, they can interact with that. And so that's kind of something I was thinking about doing because um, I do it. I, I, already, I already do it, but not online. Like I do it whenever people are over or one-on-one -on -one with someone, you know, right. I, can just, yeah. I can just open Ableton right now and start creating music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, I need to open the Splice app. <laughs> all these apps, all these new yeah, of, uh, VSTs, technology. Yeah. Cool, so yeah, so this is more of just a personal one-on-one. -on -one. You're starting off with a good one-on-one -on -one basis and then building from there, the, the, the thing. Yeah, so I have a few people that I'm coaching and that I'm help helping them create their music and put it out there in the world. I'm, I'm helping people like musicians, artists, songwriters. Um, even if they don't have to use Ableton, I can create the project and build it with them on the other side of the Zoom call. And they'll tell me exactly what they want. And I'll understand because I've done it so many times now. I know like the general way people communicate when they don't understand the music theory and terms that we use as producers um, and it's been a thing that I love to do you know I just love channeling because when people are inspired I can tap into that and get on a higher vibration it allows me to really reach a point where I'm not overthinking about what I'm doing and really like uh, just being in the moment and having like everything every moment is a new moment and it can lead to new places. It, and, and there's someone else here that is, that is being the, the driver, the, you know, the, the inspiration, the, the, yeah, the passion side of it. And sometimes, you know, like as a producer, you're just tired of certain things and you just don't want to hear a cheesiness or something that's just, you know, not right for you. But some people will love it and it will make you think, wow, and if that guy is able to imagine something cool with that, then, then okay. I can, I can too, you know, like, why not? You know, it, it doesn't hurt. And it usually you know, doesn't. It usually doesn't hurt. It usually leads to something good because eventually you fix it up and you get it to somewhere good. Because if you were to, to if you have a, like a daughter who's producing something and you watch her work and you, you know, like, you know how, how to fix it and you know that it can get, it, it can always get better. There's always something you can do to make her look better in what she's doing and that's the same kind of idea like if you look at other people's projects and you actually care you'll be able to help them and and it can just tell, be telling them that what they have is already good it, it yeah. already has something yeah that's that, that's the uh that's what makes the biggest distinction between a okay producer and a really great producer is being able to navigate the circumstance to um to a, a vision that everybody on board can really be proud of and when I work alongside an artist, songwriter, and working with them, the goal for me isn't to say, well, here's an eight bar loop, you know, write a top line to that and let's just vibe. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a world where I'm like, like a director of a film, a good film director is the guy who helps the vision get brought. He's like, this needs to connect with this, this all needs to connect with this. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're called to really, uh, you know, paint that whole overall vision. So, so it's cool, man. I mean, I think, uh, I think a great way to, to, um, to, to, you know, involve what you, what you have going on, um, you know, what, what you have going on with, uh, yeah, I would just encourage you to continue putting out content, you know, just being, being consistent, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and, and yeah, man, and, you know, shout you out, just give people, uh, Seems like you're doing a lot of stuff with uh, the Atura, um controllers. Have they reached out to you? Um, yep, that's uh, that was three years ago, and that's the first video I made for them. It got 366k, 
and it's like the highest views I have. It was yeah. the first video that I did for, for them because I only had four days to make that video and I gave it my all and I didn't overthink it and it was just perfect. And, uh, and then the rest kind of, you know, like now I set a standard and I, I kind of follow that standard for two years, mm -hmm. not really thinking about something different, just doing the same process again and again in different ways. It's, it was fun. But now I want to I want to evolve now. So okay. I my first talking head was a year ago, and that's my second one right here. And okay. and now I have all my gear. I have everything I need to kind of start talking to my my audience, and not just showing them music and uh, and a performance. And it's not even a real performance. It's it's live. It's not live. Like it's just kind of right. synchronizing. Yeah. Uh, and I say it. You know, I don't. I'm not like trying to portray that it was live even though sometimes in the title i put live like live performance using it's just a keyword no, i get it and look the reality is that's what the majority of people are doing anyways there's just no way they're going to be able to you know look the reality is all, all the people you start seeing doing these live jams that's what they're doing that's the same stuff um cool man well dude i mean that, that, that's awesome what you're doing I'm totally encouraged uh by what you're doing and just to continue continue just doing that um Find, you know, find the niche, find the rhythm that's been working, for, that's working for you. Um, you know, maybe, maybe include a little bit more of the insight that you're giving with that, the, 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 the tutoring that you're doing with a couple of the people that you're helping out, include them into the process, you know, let that stuff, already, since you're already doing it, let that be a part of the content anyways, you know, yep. start unfolding that. And, and it becomes more of a personality of not another dude who's using a, an Artura controller, but then this becomes, you know, Alex, um, who, who's really focused on, um, you know, like helping and mentoring and, and just kind of taking, helping people on that one-on-one -on -one basis. So include some of that because then it just shows that side of you that people might have more interest in. Exactly. Spot on, man. I have an idea, actually. What if we, uh, what if we started a thread and I... I go into your blueprint, your EP blueprint that you're releasing, mm -hmm. because it's uh, it's about uh, learning how to create uh, with your current skill set, and you know, kind of using your approach and your breakdowns that you're you're teaching us. Mm -hmm. And I can go through that process and um, and release an album, and release my own EP, and document the whole process, and kind of you know, like showing exactly how your EP blueprint is with a student that is you know yeah. documenting his process and following your advice uh, on the letter which is something that um really is like what you want as a teacher is that yeah. people do the practice like they do the, the things you say that they should do because the, a lot of it is homework it's not just watching your videos you have to take that in and then try to replicate it in your own way and uh, that's something that people don't see enough yeah well dude I'll, I'll tell you what i think that's a great thing to do. uh that'd be awesome and then what we'll use is, uh, we'll use that documentation process of you filling out. Obviously, we would love to have that when we reopen it again, maybe uh, before the summer or something like that, when we open it out, um, because it's going to take time for you to kind of put all that together. But when you have all that together, we would love to spotlight you on that. And then when we recirculate all that, because between me and Graham, I mean, there's over like 800,000 you know, it's, it's short of under a million email subscribers. So it's, it's a good number of people because uh, we're, we're sending it to both Graham's list and my list. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, we would like to feature and highlight, hey, man, here's Alex. Here's a lot of stuff he's doing. Um, so, yeah, we would love to just, that's a great way to send traffic and eyeballs to what you're doing by highlighting that whole process. So it does, it does good, you know, it does good for us. Because it's showing, hey, it actually works. Here's somebody who's doing it. He took the course. He's he's doing every every step. It's helped him grow. And we'd love to interview you. So we, you know, Graham and I will have you interviewed, and we'll use all that for as a as a way to just uh, encourage others to step on it when we open up the course again. You know, that's so I awesome. think that's a good, that's a, that's a good uh, a good move for sure. So tell me about the course. So the course really kind of started off from a selfish standpoint in the sense that Graham and I just wanted an excuse to just hang out and do some, do some music together. So we, um, right, right. I did a couple tunes before, sent it, sent it over to him. It's like, yo, just put your vocals on this. And those, those thief and raise my flag were two tunes that were supposed to go, uh, to two specific campaigns, the stuff I was doing with Ubisoft and Ubisoft liked them, but they didn't, it never ended up fitting. Um, 
And so I was like, well, I've got it. Might as well just put it out myself. And I just invited Graham to it. And let alone, I got, I was able to get like the song, uh, Raising My Flag, the, the, the Tonight Show, Quest, you know, Questlove reached out and wanted to play it with the roots. So I was like, all right, yeah, you know, play it on the freaking show, of course. Uh, so that was, uh, so that was cool. And then, um, and then I was like, Graham, why don't we just do an EP together? And I was like, okay. I was like, why don't we take it a next step further and actually document the whole process so that we can establish, create a whole course on how we're going to do an EP to help people and lay the founding, you know, the foundation of how actually we do it. How do we songwrite? So it would be good. Like everybody can kind of be a fly on the wall. How do we come up with melodies? Every, every thought process that I go as a producer working along with somebody. So we thought it'd be a really cool idea. And uh, we came here. He came down to Miami. He lives in Tampa. I came down to Miami. Um, we had about two and a, yeah, almost three days. So we knocked out the five song in those three days. And then we just started going crazy and putting the whole course together. It's like, what would really be value? And then, so when we finished the course, it was like, it was like, okay, here we go. We got it. And then we we're looking at it. I was like, mm, no, we need a lot more. So then we spent an extra three weeks, even up until now, we were in the hotel room, uh, like adding more stuff to the course, like, tweaking a whole bunch of things. So we really wanted to go all out with this thing. We even asked a good friend of ours, Adam Ivy, to be like, bro, just add some bonus stuff to it, man. And he was like, okay. So he added like a whole in-depth Spotify strategy thing in there as well. So we wanted to go crazy with adding tremendous value to it. And we think we're, we're really excited about it. So um, everything from zero to promo, like I don't know the difference between a toaster oven and a hard drive. You're going to learn how to actually make your, your whole EP. And the reason why we decided to go with this EP was because, um, you know, everybody is like, yeah, we know that the value, you know, you put out a single and you consistency, but there's something different about being able to put out an album or a collection of a body of work that's different than I've got a single out. When you put a body of work together, what you're doing, like we talked about with insecurities, you're allowing to step above the insecurities and say, okay, Here's a body of work that I've put and invested and committed a lot of energy, time, blood, sweat, and tears into. And, uh, and you, can, you can shoot them out as singles, but putting that together and releasing an EP does what I've seen happen to many artists. It starts a momentum. It starts an avalanche. When you put an EP out there, it's a small snowball that you finally let go and roll out that starts to build and build and build. And then you start to see more... Uh, confidence, more encouragement happen with the rest of your music releases. So a lot of times with the release of a single first, you're like, uh, it didn't go well. I don't know if I want to keep doing this, you know, but no matter of the response of the EP, just the thought of like, I've got five songs, I put it out there, got it, go. And it just, it does something. And so that's what we, that's why we really wanted to focus on, um, putting that out. And putting it's that the best thing that somebody can do actually yeah and it's the best thing that each of us do eventually we do it and then yeah. we want to share with others and what you're doing is you're sharing not only the music but you're sharing the process yeah and, um, i admire that yeah man so um that's uh that's that's the 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 heart behind the the course that's what's going on with that it just launched today and uh, we're super excited from all the great responses so far that we've been getting. So yeah, man, hope it does well. Um, you know, regardless of the outcome, it was just um, a lot of fun to do. So yeah, man. So if, yeah, if you jump on that course, um, you know, let let us know, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll definitely want to spotlight you as one of the the key guys. Um, you know, and and honestly, I want to see if it's actually been helpful. You know, if it's like, hey, bro, I took the course and. I just want to flick my eye. Nothing where it's like, okay, great. Then we, we got to get back to work and make it, you know, make it better, you know? Okay. I'm going to offer you a deal. Yeah. To make you, so my idea is going to, it's like, take your, take your, what you have mm -hmm. to a next level by um, actually teaching others, not just how to, not just the process and like in the music and the, the genre and how to do the things, but also how they can document that process just the way you do and reach mm. that level of vulnerability and, mm. and that anyone can be a YouTuber and anyone can, can influence. And you don't have to be like the best of the world in the world. You're, you're always going to 
if you're real and authentic, there's always going to be someone who's inspired by what you do and it's going to learn from what you do. Opening yeah. a session on Ableton can be something that's challenging for some and then what to do from there. So just the fact that you know how to, what to do from there, even if you're not the, the best, it's going to get the process started in some Yeah, we, there's a module in the course where we talk about that. It's like you're going to need some behind-the-scenes footage and a lot of that's going to be documenting the process. So we talk about how we're doing this, even the, you know, screen flow and how, how all that's oh, the stuff. Do. And, and yeah, like zero resources, like, Hey, you want to know cheap on a budget here, like apps you can download for free. Here's the ways that you can get all this stuff done. So yeah, all that paves way. So this whole thing could very much inspire somebody to be like, Hey, you know, I, I had to document all this stuff for the course. Anyways, I can keep doing this and just start releasing content out, out there. So I hope that happens from from the course you know but um yeah man looking forward to it and and excited how how it impacts lives so yeah, yeah man that's uh that's that's what I, that's like I'm, I'm telling you now and i'm telling the viewers that i'm gonna take your ep course yeah. and i'm gonna see how it does for me authentically yeah. as someone who as a customer because i actually i'm i'm buying into this like i'm not yeah. like we're not just like playing around here yeah. like i'm I, like I, I met you not by coincidence, you know, mm. if I hadn't met you, I would not have known about your, uh, your course mm. because my life has been so busy and out like outside. And hey, somehow I just, I was walking in a large crowd and I saw you pass by and I was like, yeah, yeah. that's ill. And then, and then I, when I was at Hilton, I was like, wait, that that's ill, ill factor. How do you know ill, ill factor? You don't know him. He doesn't know you. You just saw him, but you know him virtually. And then, and then I started running and, I, and then I stopped you. And then you were mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you did, man. And like I said, it's, it, it's been rewarding finding a, a bunch of guys like yourself um, and, and seeing, hey, man, I, you know, had a bunch of people just hit me up. It's like, bro, I'm a big fan of what you're doing, uh, both your music and everything that you're doing with Beat Academy. And I was like, great. And I met a couple of Beat Academy members there. So I was like, man, this is awesome. Like, this is such a, a great, a great thing. It's rewarding to me to be able to see um, the, the people that, that I've impacted in any way. And uh, um, it encourages me in a big time. And so I really appreciate you. Thank you for the time, for even for this interview. Because uh, it's helpful for me, man. Because sometimes even on my level, even doing this, you're thinking, is this really working? Is this really helping people? I, you know, and, and, uh, and it's always good to kind of get that feedback. So um, appreciate that, man. And, uh, and yeah, man, looking, looking forward to, to to do a lot more and yeah hold on it's kind of uh luck so you still hear me yeah yeah I hear you. Oh, okay i, I don't know if you had, specific, yeah i don't know if you had any specific interview questions or things like that did you want to go through uh, um, it depends if you have time if you have something else got, we can continue it another time yeah i've got um i've got like a good it's 138. I've got like a good six to eight minutes or I, I can do 10 minutes and then I got to prep for right. a, a session. All right, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So how did you get into music production and were you always committed to it? Uh, I got into music production because uh, similar to what you were mentioning, I, uh, I grew up in a musical family. My dad was in a salsa band, um, Cuban, Puerto Rican, born and raised in Miami. And I started playing piano and trombone at an early age. It was just random. I think my dad needed a trombone player in his salsa band. I was like, hey, you guess what instrument you're going to learn? I was like, okay. Um, but I got into music production right about my junior to senior year of high school. And I'm going to date myself. This is about 1998, 99. I graduated in 99. So around high school, I started DJing for local friends' house parties. And then I would buy a, I spent all my money buying like a, a, a um, an Accord Electribe EA1. And I bought this little, uh, and, and an Electribe EA1. So I had this synth and this drum machine. So I bought the two together, started making beats with that uh, along with my DJ set. So I, I would mix with the turntables and I'm gonna have this drum machine with it. I thought it was clever. I thought like, oh no, I'm not just your typical DJ, whatever. But that's how I was doing it. And uh, I would have to sneak out of the house and DJ at these underground raves that were happening here in Miami and uh, ultra music festival was just kind of getting started. It was like ultra music festival one. It was on the beach. And so the scene was 
was alive and I was doing a lot of drum and bass and jungle at that time. So I was producing drum and bass. I was DJing a lot of drum and bass. And so I got into the production of that first. I got into what I was DJing. So I started off with this beta version of Fruity Loops. It was like Fruity Loops. Mm. And Reason, and I was using Cubase. It was like Cubase VST, like old school. Like it was Cubase 4. Um, so I was trying to make music with these drum machines. And then I thought, I, 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 you know, I heard about being able to do music on the computer. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And I got into it. And I was committed because it, I was committed because at the time, technology was just letting me evolve. So the reason why I was getting so committed is because every time I would meet my limitation, I'm like, okay, I can only do so much with this drum machine and this little synth. I would, I would see my, my cap. And then I would hear about something that would increase that cap. Like, oh, you mean I could record this and do that? Boop, 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 boop. And then I would just, I would be committed to discovering how to do that. And this is before YouTube or anything like that. So I'm just like trying to figure things out because I really wanted to get a certain sound or do certain, certain things. And so that's how I got, I got into producing music. And then I started doing a lot of remixing at that time, which led me to meeting guys like Jimmy Douglas and Timberland. And they reached out and, and Ricky Martin, actually the very first like big name I met was Ricky Martin. I was working at a, a Sam Ash, a local music store at the time. And the, the uh, record producer for Ricky Martin was like, Hey, we need somebody to do some like pew pew tiki tiki music. And I was like, what is What on earth is that? And it was like, I don't know. It's like this DJ stuff. So I like dance music, like, like remix. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. I was like, okay. <laughs> So I started doing some remix stuff for him and they invited me to a session, like an actual session with Ricky. And I was like, yo, why don't you come over and, and you know, we want to invite you to the session. I was like, okay. And Reason just came out, like the program Propeller Heads just came out. So I was exp- experimenting with that. But I came over, I went over to their house and it was just like, I, I, my head, you know, I finally peered into the pop production world and I, just being exposed to that, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is it. I, I want to be here. I want to work behind the scenes. I want to produce songs. Uh, and I just kept rolling. And then I linked up with, with Jimmy Douglas and, and Tim and everything. Just the ball started rolling from there. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. Second question. Well, um, how do I uh, sign up to whatever you're selling? Because this, this story was just epic. <laughs> how do I sign up? Well, Matt, you can, you can, you can check out beatacademy.com and everything's laid out on that website. It's a landing page that, uh, that's going to, you know, give you a little info about myself and what I'm doing. And look, the, the heart behind Beat Academy, I didn't want it to be a cold refrigerator of just courses, right? I didn't want it to be, Hey, here's some courses I made. There you go. But I, instead I wanted to create a platform that became more of a mentorship bridge and so I'm very active in that. And so the component behind that was this community component, um, as well as a monthly coaching call that I'm doing. And I'm going to be rolling something out in the summer where I'm going to actually invite maybe 10 to 12 people to go at a more intimate uh, and a committed level where I'm in, inviting like a VIP coaching experience where we're going to be meeting regularly uh, a month, just like this on a Zoom call, where you're getting mentored by me and other of my colleagues but like, that's where we, that's more of like, but that's what I want to be to Canada to be. So there's a community aspect for accountability. There's challenges that we're doing and there's windows of opportunity as well, where if I'm brought onto a project like, Hey, uh, so-and-so needs these type of songs, or I'm working on this, uh, you know, actually last week I did an invite where people were like, Hey, I'm, I'm working on this video game. I just don't have the time or I just, I'm just swamped with stuff. You guys want to work on this project? Here are all the details. And I'm literally posting that in my Beat Academy platform. People are like, are you serious? Is this a joke? I was like, no. And I've had guys win. Like I've had people jump on those opportunities and, and people uh, just got a girl, got her first placement on a dance record with a big DJ. Uh, got a guy who was making about you know $3,000 a month for six months making music for the Knicks. So that's awesome to me that I can provide those kind of opportunities. And that's what I wanted Beat Academy to be. So you can get more information at beatacademy.com and uh, just give us your name and input. Uh, you know, your, your, yeah. So with masterclass, there's a Timberland um, masterclass, 
And they, they partnered up with us in sending people who wanted to go more in depth with, uh, with Ableton because Timberland uh, is, using, is using it in his masterclass. And so they said, hey, if you want more in depth, you want more information about it, just hit up beatacademy.com and they send you directly to our Ableton live tutorial awesome. on the YouTube page. That's yeah. cool. Amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Wow. And then how do I, uh, so, so you have free tutorials. Cool. Yeah, That's we've got, tutorials. you can watch the free tutorials, yeah. courses, community. <clears throat> but you can click to download that little button there. I've got a, 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 a blueprint that I, a free guide. So once you just give the information on there, just your email. And, uh, and this is just a great way for me to personally connect with you and yeah. get, get a hold of, of, those who are serious about taking the and next step. The video and so the there you go. That's it. Simple as that. Guidance and resources to make Grammy worthy music. Yeah. The Academy. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. 15 minutes. And then claim your free month. Okay. Then, <coughs> problem in isolation. True. Definitely. I was, I was just talking yeah, about that with San JC. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's exactly what we were talking about. And uh, like how social media and how, you know, like, caring about what people think and be like being not forgetting who you really are, like uh, as a musician, as an artist, as a creator. And uh, like, yeah, w when there's that pressure of, uh, of just, you know, and, you know, having an appearance and like, you cannot just post like anything on YouTube because like some things don't get viewed as much as other things. And it's like, you have to do this and you have to do that. And that's how it Yeah. Works. There's a lot of pressure we put on ourselves. There's a lot of pressure and there's, there's a, a, there's a big thing, you know, there's, like I said, the insecurities kick in. It's like, am I really good enough? Do people even really care? Um, you start to doubt why you even began doing it in the first place. You know, it's like, I started making these videos because I just was really help, passionate about helping people. And then, you know, whether it's a negative comment or whether it was X, Y, and Z, it just, uh, it, it just became, uh, you know, it becomes something that becomes a stumbling block or a hurdle for you yeah okay so here here am i i'm gonna subscribe and oh, just to show the world that it, this is not sponsored i'm not doing this like the, the deal is like i'm giving you my commitment to this because i want this and um yeah like i'm gonna document the process and it's gonna be raw so that people can see that it's not like it's not wait wait hold on so if you're if you want to jump on the ep course then let me give you let me give you the, the site because that is a set it's uh that's living on the recording revolutions website so let me give that to you okay because that's not in the in the um, in the thingy in the thingy thingy hold on um so this is a different thing like beat the cat yeah the course the thing. course that we did the build your ep is a joint launch that we did together that's living in the recording revolution site now what you're about to to subscribe to was the Beat Academy membership, which gives you access to um, the community, all the courses that I have, and, and stuff like that. So that, I mean, I'd, always, I'd recommend you guys do that anyways, those who are watching. But let me give you the website. We, it just launched today, and I want to make sure I'm giving you the right site here. It's the recordingrevolution.com slash EP. The recording? Huh? Yeah, the recording revolution, or recordingrevolution.com. Hold on. Learn how to record and mix. Is that it? That's recording. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me, let me see the. It's record, the recording revolution dot com slash EP blueprint. Trying to. EP blueprint as one word. Yeah. No result found. Can you can you read that? Is it is it correct? Yeah, hold on a second. Let me um uh goodness. Right, let me just shoot this over to your, your chat really quick. It's my recording revolution dot com. Goodness gracious. Okay, I'm putting in your chat. There you go. There's a link. Okay, thanks. That's the 
So that, that's the that's the landing page for the the course. There you go. Sorry about that. All right. So it will close for new students in four days. Is that real? Yes. Yeah, we're doing a week launch. Okay, and then when it closes, then it starts, and it's like a membership. So, so, so there's you said it's interactive. So you're gonna actually interact with me while I'm on the course as a student of the course. So the what course. we're doing with this, uh, yeah. So, hold on, so I think what I was explaining before is the interaction I go in with my Beat Academy website. Right. My, right. Okay. Okay. So for this course, this is just a course, but, but for those who jump on it now, Graham and I are gonna have a live uh, webinar answering any questions uh, for those who, who, who jump on the course this week. So you go through it, and I think in a couple of days, we're gonna do an accountability webinar check to see, hey guys, how are you doing? How, what's going on? Where are you at with this course? What are you learning? And how else can we help you out? So we're gonna be doing that. Uh, I think immediate, uh, the immediate one, and then a, a one 30 days after to check in to see how far along you guys have come to hold you accountable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So cool, man. I mean, you could jump on it any time. I got I to gotta bounce um, for, for the session. But uh, yeah, man. I know we kind of did this on Orthodox, but if you had a certain thing, if you wanted to film like an interview thing for like your website, you let me know and we can and we could just shoot another, another video and just nail those out. That was perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Ill Factor. That's actually exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be con conversational. I didn't really have an intention more okay. than just talking to you and getting to know you on a more personal level. Uh, I did write those questions. That was just after uh, gotcha. after we met. I was so excited and I wrote them down. But then I realized, no, I actually, I want to meet him and have just conversation, see what pops up. I want him to tell, yep. tell me about his life and you know, like see how we can maybe uh, partner up or collaborate or whatever. So yeah, definitely uh, interested in continuing this thread of, of conversation at some point. So we'll keep in touch. Yeah, man. Yeah. Have a great uh, rest of your day. You too, Alex. Take care, man. Peace.